Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Rhonda Warren. I am a Power BI technical specialist here at Microsoft, and today we're going to talk about Power On, powering on Power BI. What does that mean from a licensing perspective? What does that mean when we talk about Power BI? But before we get started to how we turn it on, let's kind of look at how we understand what is Power BI. Well, Power BI is, for lack of a better word and understanding, it's a visualization tool and visualization tool from the standpoint of business intelligence. It is truly a collection of all uh, collections of software services, such as apps, connectors to bring data in from different sources. And those data that comes in from different sources could be unrelated, but it's designed to give you the business user, the, your, your business leaders and your organization immediate insight with interactive drilling and interactive capabilities so you can understand the performance of the organization, whether it's looking at hospital admissions, whether it's looking at drug interaction activity, it's all about giving you information to make better business decisions. Now, you can bring data into Power BI using data spreadsheets from Excel. You can take a collection of data from the cloud or the collection from data from that's in, sitting in your on-premise, say, data warehouses or, say, in your SQL Server databases. Power BI lets you bring together and easily connect data from all sources so that you can visualize and you can discover what's most important to your organization. And when we discover what's most important, we can then take action. Now, licensing types. So to turn Power BI on, now that we understand what it can do, how do we drive it? How do we make it available? Well, one, we make it available through different licensing types. There are really two basic licenses of Power BI. There's the free user, which all of us that have worked with Power BI and know it well, started out with this free license. You can actually go to uh, my workspace, download a local copy of Power BI and start creating, start discovering how easy it is to build visualizations, dashboards, reports, and then be able to make those reports available to others. Now, when you wanna make those reports available to others, now you're sharing content. When you share a content, it's no longer a free license anymore. It becomes a collaborative license. And in that case, you need a license by a, for a user that is called a pro license. Pro licenses are those users that publish and create content to workspaces. Workspaces are shared environments or file systems that allows users to come in and access dashboards, subscribe to dashboards and report, and also share content. So whenever you're wanting to collaborate, share content, you're going to need a pro license. Otherwise, if your individual student want to play and learn about Power BI, please feel free to go download a free license of Power BI. Now, beyond that, we know that communities are not just singular, they're not small groups anymore, but what if we wanted to empower the whole enterprise? We not only want to give information out to those that are within our organization, but also give content available to those external to our organization. That's when we start to look at enterprise level licensing, and that's what we call a capacity. And capacity is just that. It's more like a server, if you will. It's a cloud-based solution in which users from both sides, in and out of your organization, can leverage the same content that begins in these workspaces or our files. Now, as I said before, the desktop is that free license. You can have multiple sources of data. You get really all the same content as if you were a pro user, but the key thing is that this is your main development tool to create Power BI data sets. It's where everyone starts typically when they start to work with Power BI for the first time. Now, only pro users and another license is a capacity license, what we call a premium per user license, can share content with their colleagues. Under that scenario, they can control what their colleagues can and can't do uh, with, with the content that they have published. Now, when you get into uh, who should use that desktop user, it's really, again, anyone wanting to explore, typically the business users, Power BI has grown through adoption through the business community, throughout organizations all over the country and around the world. 
It's those users who are curious about how they make better decisions. They're used to working with multiple file systems, getting information from all over the place, but they want to have a self-service, more controlled environment as to how they analyze, monitor, and explore information via dashboards and reports. Again, it's all about empowering your business users to be able to create the content that they need that's most important to them using a very simple, simple tool. Now, what's that pro again? Again, this is the key user. Pro, pros are your creators. You're the developers of content. They understand the level of information that they need to work with, which is usually not just one single file or subject. It's usually multi-subjects. It's usually data from coming from all over uh, the environment and maybe external to the environment being brought into a single data set so that they can build creative dashboards and report again for consumable content. Uh, the pro users can publish again, they can share content with others, and they can consume content no, no matter whether they're in a desktop environment or running in a comp premium capacity. This, they're the key creators of, uh, of your different models and so forth. Now again, who should use pro? They're going to be your report creators. These are the interview users that are going to curate the data and create the required dashboards as well as applications or reports that the organization needs. They can share that data and they can maintain all that data uh, for their colleagues. So they're the central key point for delivery and creation of content. They do not have to be an IT person. They are typically a business user uh, that's charged with data analytics within the organization. So these e all of the licenses that we support are typically not designed to be heavy IT. They're designed to be for those users that need to access content and need to create a content quickly. Power BI is integrated through all of Microsoft services, such as SharePoint, Excel, PowerPoint. So if you think about those modern work type of activities and applications, Power BI fits very well in that, as well as Team and Biz Viva Insights. So this is just a complete comparison of what you get when we talk about the various licenses. Your pro licenses, which is the one that is going to be their creator licenses, has the ability to create mobile application access. They have the ability to build models. Uh, there is a limited on the refresh rate because again, they're your developer, your creator users. Now, when you get into capacities, you can see that the capacities usually users, and that's the server side, they usually have a lot more capabilities associated with that. For example, when you purchase a capacity, meaning that you're not managing individual users anymore, everyone in the organization gets access to the content, you can see that you can create paginated reports. There's no need to have a separate on-premise server. It's already embedded within the capacity. You also get some uh, advanced features such as uh, artificial intelligence. We're going to leverage more of Azure capabilities from an Azure da Active Directory. And we're also going to uh, uh, get more content when it comes to Azure Data Lake and storage. So there's another aspect because we're managing the environment. Uh, this is a dedicated environment for you when you look at a capacity. And we'll talk a little bit more about a capacity, but please take note of the differences in what you see across the individual licenses. Now, when it comes to pricing, these are list prices. Uh, you may have a contract that gives diff deeper discounts on the, from these list prices, but I'm going to quote list prices here. When you're looking at a pro or creator user in a standalone, you're looking at $9.99 $9 per month, uh, and that's subject to a license agreement with your supplier, so they could very well change. It is included in your E5. So you, for your E5 equivalents, you get a Power BI Pro license for usability. When you are looking at an E1 or E3 uh, for Office 365, you're looking at an add-on cost and you may want to buy individual licenses in that case. But this is the price for uh, the Pro users. Now, I talked about the capacity a little bit earlier and said, we'll talk a little bit about what that really means. The capacity is going to give you a lot of premium features. It's going to scale greater, it's going to perform better, and it's going to be very responsive. 
a capacity is not on premise with you. It is an environment in which we manage on uh, Microsoft. We guarantee uptimes. We guarantee the resources. We make it available and your administrators will come in and they will give users access to the capacities as they're purchased. Now, uh, it's going to give you all the great features as I talked about. It's going to give you some AI driven analysis. It's going to allow your administrators to see how the capacities are performing with a what we call a, a metrics app. So you'll see who's using the capacity, how out queries are performing within the capacity. So you get to size up and down that capacity any way you want to cover uh, your requirement, your business requirements of the number of users, as well as the number of data sources or what you need at scale. I equate a capacity to an enterprise level license. That is, it is not user based from a standpoint, I have to license individual users. You actually license the capacity. Now, what that again is about the amount of computing space that's required to that we are reserving for your organization that is dedicated to you so that you don't have to run, worry about the limits that you can run into with regards to runaway queries or with regards to how much space a particular data set or data model needs in order to run. We typically see customers moving to capacities where there is an organization that has anywhere from 250 uh, plus employees needing to be needing to do analysis. So that's when capacities make greater sense. And again, this is an enterprise level solution. Now, when we talk about uh, capacities from a pricing perspective, there are several different flavors. Capacities are based on cores. And when you buy it, the, the lowest core capacity you can buy is a P1, and that gets you eight virtual cores. And that's priced at $4.95, $49.95 a month. Now, you can add as many of these SKUs or capacities as you like. You can add two P1s, which will get you 16 cores, or you can buy just a single P2. It is really how do you want to mix and match for your requirements on what is needed to serve the entire enterprise. So we don't limit the number of capacities. I have customers as a reference that run over 30 different capacities across their organization. So it begins on the breadth and depth of how much bandwidth you need to actually run your business intelligence solution. But we always recommend that customers start out with a P1 and expand from there because you can always add capacity at any given time. And remember, we have a metric app that's going to monitor when you hit that 80% threshold of need additional capacity. So when you get to the 80% of performance on your queries and, of, uh, and uses of the capacity, we're going to recommend that you consider adding a new capacity. But you're always well aware of how the capacities are performing. Now, again, uh, premium licensing requirements, you're going to need a pro, pro license. I always get asked this question. Well, if I buy premium, do I need a pro license? Absolutely. Your pros, are, again, they're your creators, and they're going to publish content to the premium capacity. So users then read that content that's been published in that premium capacity. Those become your basic users at that point in time. So your users will get access to everything in a single environment. The key thing to note is in a capacity, you do not have to manage and price for individual license user licenses. So consuming content that's shared will show you here that you can consume that content across the board. A pro that sends content out there, for example, uh, the premium capacity user with no name can't access that information. But we want to show you the premium per user capacity. So if you don't want to buy a full capacity, then maybe you want to look at a premium per user because you want the capabilities of the capacity, but you don't want to commit to a all out by a full capacity. Premium per users get the same features for the most case that the capacity will provide them. But you're licensing these individuals you, uh, individually, and they're basically in a shared environment. So whereas a capacity is dedicated resources to you, in a shared capacity, uh, which are PPUs, 
they are sharing that capacity with other PPE licenses. So they still get the scalability, they still get all the same performance of a, a, a full dedicated capacity. It's just you're not committing to a full capacity for every uh, user in your organization. You're buying those individual licenses. Okay, so I've included different scenarios. So let's, let's just take a look at a couple of these scenarios. Scenario two, you have an organization or department that has a combination of users that require self-service BI and collaboration and users who only need to consume BI content. The solution for that would be, yes, I do need pro users because I need to, uh, that require self-service and collaboration, but they also are my creators. I also want to add a premium because I can contribute content across the organization as well as external to the organization for those users that need to just consume and view information. So that would be the solution footprint that we put in play from a licensing perspective and we would need both a pro as well as a premium. So we've talked now about how we power on Power BI and we do that first by starting with the user licenses. Now that we got the license to drive, let's, how do we learn to drive the car? We have a number of Power BI resources out there to help you understand how to work with Power BI. There are dashboards in a day that are put on uh, that gives you some basic fundamental information about how to create dashboards, how to create reports, and of course, how to publish them. There are a number of different training videos out there as well as YouTube channels to tell you all about Power BI. You also want to augment Power BI with Power Apps that allow you to uh, drive some process-driven activity, you automating Power BI and how it is how it's consumed across the organization. So I would encourage you to go and access some of this content to see how you can now drive this car and know how you can expand your usability and adoption of Power BI throughout your organization. I thank you for your time today. I hope you found this podcast use helpful and useful. And the next podcast that's coming up is going to be presented by my esteemed colleague, Christina Tilbrook, and she's going to be talking about Power BI FAQs, everything you needed and wanted to know about Power BI. And that's dated for January 19, 2023. Thank you. And thank you for your time today and look forward to you on the road to turning on Power BI.